I am now recording the meeting. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Universal Support, brought to you by the Kaufman Foundation. Uh, and getting ready for our summit. So, who has not heard my spiel about the summit yet? Yeah. Oh, and Katie. Okay. Katie. <laughs> okay. Great. So, the Eastship Summit is coming up on us. Um, hopefully, everybody will get there um, in time to take advantage of some of the other things that we're doing. So, just want to remind everyone that the Eastship Summit is just a point in time. We're just coming together, and um, and it's not necessarily like the be all and end all and, and everything's gonna get solved and we'll have a field called ecosystem building and then we'll be done because it just won't work that way. So um, before we continue, I'm gonna ask Beth and Katie if you would do me a favor and take notes like a TLDR so that um, because I tend to repeat things on on seven, eight calls during the month. Um, if you'll just take some of the fine points so that when we put the video up on the dashboard, it's not just me making up stuff that I thought I said. So it would be really helpful. Um, so I'm just gonna ask Beth and Katie to do that and you can just email her or um, put it on the Slack channel or something after you're done, okay? No Great, all right, so we're coming together and this is a working conference. So for sure, we will be um, getting, rolling up our sleeves and getting to work in bringing these initiatives, the ones that I emailed you, <clears throat> which have been identified as kind of top of mind for, um, for the community. So it's, um, it's things that are recognized by the people in the community, the ship champions, the Kaufman Foundation, myself and Christine, to say, you know, this is a good starting point. Out of 130 initiatives, that does not mean that these are the most important. These are the ones that have been recognized as a good place to start. So, um, for universal support, we have five of them that are in there, and and I, when I emailed them over, the idea is hopefully to get you more familiar with them so that um, you, especially because you've been on several calls, that um, wherever your energy takes you, you will identify something that you want to work on and lead the engagement, which would be really great because you all, all of you are, who are on the call, <clears throat> have more knowledge, working knowledge of these goals because and these initiatives because we've discussed them. We've discussed the thoughts about them, we've gotten feedback for your, from your fellow community members. So you're not coming into this cold and some people will be. So, um, so any support that you could give would be greatly appreciated. That said, um, because we're gonna be focusing on goals and initiatives and national resource providers. So that's other foundations, organizations across the United States, like Katie works for Urban Manufacturing Alliance and, um, and organizations that, that's, that have a scope of focus that expand across regions. Um, they are national resource providers. What makes a national resource provider? Um, all of that languaging is, is being worked on, but um, like Katie's organization has been with us through the last two summits, and, um, and so they kind of understand the work um, and, and their roles and, and, um, and how, they bet, how they add a value add. When we talk about doing these initiatives, <clears throat> These initiatives can't live in a vacuum. Entrepreneurs, um, and myself being one of them, you know, we, we embrace an idea and we think about how we're gonna create and grow that idea. That's the primary focus. One of the things that we don't think through all the way to the is the exit or how it's sustained or how it's scalable past your initial launch because you're so focused on that. So what we want to do is think about how these things live 
when they're not being funded or supported by organizations like the foundation. And you know, foundations like the Kauffman Foundation don't necessarily support individual initiatives or, um, or programs particularly. They, they usually work with a larger organization which houses that program or concept or whatever so that it can live on and it doesn't have to rely on your funding mechanism. <clears throat> so that said, that's why the national resource providers are very important to the sustainability of these pilot programs. And our hope and our goal is to connect an idea or initiative with ecosystem building practitioners such as yourselves and organizations such as national resource providers to create a sustainable pilot program. So we're going to be working on that, IAA, creating Canvas, working on that to bring it forward. So those are, that's kind of the equation that we're shooting for. Um, sometimes national resource providers already have a program or initiative that they're working on. And, and when we look at something like that, um, what we'd like to see or hope for is that there is a board of, Christine's calling it a board of customers that will work with the organization to, to give you open perspective to, so like, let's say Katie has an, um, has a program within Urban Manufacturing Alliance that works towards say, underrepresented demographics. It would be wonderful to have this board of customers, which would be kind of the, the advising, helping to curate, ideate group that, that helps make that program even more robust than it currently lives in. I'm just making this up. So, <clears throat> so that board of customers, it would be absolutely fine for Urban Manufacturing Alliance to, let's say, get a grant, um, a pilot grant from this initiative to, to give an honorarium to ecosystem building practitioners who would be able to advise and give feedback. Does that make sense? And if you never, like, this is a made up program that I just rattled off of the top of my head. It's not something that I'm pushing the Urban Manufacturing Alliance to do or they have or whatever, although that would be kind of cool. But um, <clears throat> so does anybody have any questions about that? <laughs> okay. The other thing that we've thought about um, in, in great detail, especially with the energy and um, input from the eShip champions is, you know, there's a, there's a real desire when 450 ecosystem builders come together to be able to showcase, talk about, um, discuss, think about something that you're working on or you're interested in. And we want to offer the opportunity to be able to do that and not be reliant on just the programming that we've put together right? Because the conference is about all of us. So to assist that process um, and to make space for that, there is an unconference that will be taking place. Um, it'll start at one o'clock. So if you'd like to be part of the one, the unconference, I would suggest you be there by 1230. If you arrive by 1230, you'll be able to sign up and then the slots will start at one and go on to the afternoon. Um, till about four. <clears throat> so there are 20 minute segments with 10 minutes of, of in between time, and it'll give people the opportunity to, to come in and work on and talk about whatever it is that they want to do. Um, so unconference, like everything else, as a draft, it's messy. It's, um, it'll just regulate itself out. Do you have a question, Dia? Uh, no yes. question. I just wanted to uh, make a, a comment. I was recently at a conference where we where they did the unconference format, and uh, like you said, it was really organic and it was great. Uh, one thing I saw was many people was not familiar 
with what an unconference was and we did right. not have any moderator so in the beginning it was a little off track but it kind of just found its way through but are you guys planning on having like a moderator or is it just up to the attendees so not necessarily a moderator per se a couple of the eship champions have have um have raised their hand to to kind of facilitate and put you know it's like any grassroots kind of thing right um you can't unfortunately <clears throat> with the hope of it's grassroots. So we just kind of put it out there and then people just do the thing and that doesn't always work. So, um, so it usually requires kind of an invisible, flexible framework. It's, it needs to be squishy so that it can, it can mold to whatever you need it to mold to. So there, there will be, like last year when we had it, we actually had it under the seven goals because they were brand new and people ideated around the seven goals. This time, because we're focusing so much on the initiatives under the seven goals, there's no need to do that. So it's more of a free format um, and there'll be room designations. And, and so a couple of the eShip champions will be standing there helping to, um, to curate it. We've got Wellington, which is our production team, that's going to be putting together, like, the title of the event and what's the focus. And, and so there'll be an outline to fill out instead of handing you a post-it and go, okay, go. And, and yeah, so, so exactly. thanks for asking. That's, that's really important. So we're, we're trying to just, just enough, right? Um, to help people focus their energy as opposed to spend their energy trying to figure out how to do the thing. So, so, um, mm -hmm. sorry, I just have yes. a question. So, yeah. so our, we, we won't know the topics of the unconference until we get there at 1230. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then at 1230, if you have a, a, a thing that you want to talk about, put it up there on the board and, and that would be great. Um, cool. And it really depends on who shows up and what they want to talk about. That's going to curate the unconference. About three fifteen or so, um, three fifteen, three thirty. There will be an orientation. I would probably just say three because I have to look at the the timeline again. But around three o'clock, towards the tail end of that unconference, one of those sessions will be a new um, attendee orientation. A new attendee orientation is to just give you a little bit more of the history of what's taken place the past couple of years, a um, little more information on the eShip goals. I think, Dia, um, you, you've got more working knowledge than a first-time attendee. <clears throat> it's up to you if you want a refresher or, you know. I'm registered, as I might as well. <laughs> well, so, so follow your energy, and, and if you feel like you want to be there, great. Um, if people feel like they need a refresher, Katie, I know you've got a new team member that's coming to, um, to the summit, so that's an opportunity. There'll be some eShip champions that are going to be involved in that, um, and they'll be there to, uh, to support and answer questions, um, but they'll get a refresher. There's also a webinar that's going to be taking place this Thursday at noon. And that, that webinar is really the history of ASHIP goals and, and summits and whatnot. So um, kind of a, a, an intro. So you're welcome to sign up or share that as well. Okay, um, let's see what else. I think that's it for the ASHIP summit. Um, Wednesday night is on your own. And on your own means um, there are organizations that have um, decided that they want to sponsor some happy hours and some events. So it'll all be in the app. The app will be launched in the next day or two. Um, it should be launched, fingers crossed, tomorrow. Um, they're just going through the app just to make sure that we've got everything in there, including the the unstructured structure of the unconference or, you know, that Wednesday night is on your own and things like that. So you'll be able to see a schedule, sign up, put in your contact information if you care to share it, um, send messages, posts, things like that. Okay. Are there any questions on any more of that? 
So that's basically it in a nutshell. So universal support. Now that I've done so much talking, I'm going to let all of you get a chance to speak. So um, I would love to hear, oh, let's just do a simple question. So how are you arriving to this call? And what are you most excited about? Uh, you will we'll do a, we'll do a rosebud thorn. Okay, so the rose is um, what you're currently excited about. The bud would be what you're looking forward to. And the thorn would be what is a challenge around. And let's focus on the eShip Summit. So what are you most excited about? What are you most looking forward to? And what is a challenge for the upcoming conference for you? And I'm going to call on Beth. Hi. So I'm excited about um, seeing old friends and, and making a lot of new friends next week. Um, sorry, my brain's not working. I'm excited about looking forward to. They're kind of the same, I think. Um, looking forward to sharing some one-on-one uh, -on -one time with Avery. We're sharing one of the Airbnbs, so that'll be cool. And the challenge for me is going to be able to absorb. It's going to be impossible to absorb everything there. So how can I make sure I get to the key, key things that are important to our cause and to my community? And I will jump over to Samantha. Thank you. All right. So I'm Sam Steidel. I'm in Roanoke, Virginia. And I'm excited um, about the new information that I might learn in at the eShip next week. Maybe things that I hadn't, I didn't already know about because I feel like we all know so much, but this is like a bottomless pit of information. And so I'm excited about um, understanding what I don't know. I think that's gonna be really fun. What I'm looking forward to most is seeing all the new resources through all the resource partners and better understanding how that works so that I can bring it back to my ecosystem and build it into some of the online courses that I'm working on right now for NACI and other groups. Um, the challenge, my challenge, and I'm gonna work on this before I go, is really staying focused on my strategic goals and um, focusing in on the information that can help with those strategic goals. Because it's so much cool stuff, I need to really remember, okay, what are the goals for when I go, and what do I need to zero in on? So, all right, so um, how about Katie? Thanks, Sam. Um, okay, so I, like Beth, I'm really just excited to be um, with the community of champions that we've been cultivating the past year and then looking at the broader community and just bringing more and more people into the fold. Um, I'm looking forward to like actually getting down to brass tacks at this working conference. I, I love that, that framing of the event itself. Um, I'm also really looking forward to the unconference. I have never done something like that before and I'm really excited to not only be a part of it but then learn the process. Um, and then the challenge for me is my constant challenge. You know, I'm on a really small team and there's gonna be two of us there and so that's a lot of capacity that's gone for three days and just trying to relax and not buckle under the pressure. And we have our own conference two weeks after eShip. So just really trying to stay zen as possible, uh, you know, and, and stay present. Um, Dia, do you want to go? Yes, um, I'm excited because my first eShip, I don't know if anybody else is their first eShip, um, but it's my first time and also visiting Kansas City for the first time. Um, I'm looking forward to, um, like I said, I work in an economic development background in a rural um, community, so I feel like I'll have a little bit of a different perspective to bring to the table. And I'm also looking forward to finding others who are kind of in the similar uh, situation. And, and the challenge, I think, is just funneling through the information. I know it's going to be action packed and a lot. Uh, so just kind of staying, you know, on the goal and being productive. 
Celia. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. I'm just excited you're all coming um, and trying to trying to get things as prepared as we can for all of you to come. Um, it's a really interesting thing to have gone from um, a participant, right? So the past two summits, I've been part of the the attendee pool and now um, being honored, uh, very honored to be able to share the perspective from being an attendee, what it was like um, to, to talk to people who are on the development team and the production team of putting together this event. So, so hopefully I've represented your voice as well. Um, I think that's, that's part of the role is, um, is being able to do that. So that's a, that's a great honor and a privilege to do all those things. So how can we support <clears throat> And when we're, first of all, the, does anybody have any questions or any comments about some of these um, these goal initiatives that that we're looking at, like putting together a messaging template? I know that's a, a thing that Beth is very passionate about, the awareness campaign, um, PSA. So I'd love to hear some input on on some things that are important for you, Beth because I think you were really the one that, that brought this initiative to life. Sure, I'm anxious to, to get the ball really rolling around a global awareness campaign because I think if we can, if we can successfully launch and impact constituencies across the United States, our job for leveraging support from the funders that we need support from is going to be much easier and that has been our my first hand experience for our our region um, so the global awareness campaign definitely relates to the broader storytelling initiative and jeff and i had a good call last week and we're going to get together with avery and tyler i believe jeff yeah is it tyler that's been engaged in the storytelling side yeah so as well as jeff yes we're gonna to meet Tuesday morning to kind of hash some things out and, and get a general idea around an overall strategy and how we can get this in front of whoever we need to get in front of to really start building the uh, fundable plan, budgets, et cetera. So that's where I'm at in my mind. I don't know how much work we need to do to get other, the other key players you know, to that point, um, but I'm just ready to roll. That's excellent. I'm I'm Very so glad that the guys' thoughts. Yeah. So that would be all the th the rest of the three of you. Yeah, it's exciting, Beth, that you've been able to take this forward. I know you were really passionate about it when we worked together in Denver. It's great. What are what are your opinions or thoughts on it from a priority standpoint and all of the other things that are going on? Mine. Do, do you mean messaging? The overall plan for a global awareness strategy and implementation. I have a question. Um, and and um, forgive me if I if I don't know all the ins and outs of what's gone on in this group, but I'm actually really excited. This is the the goal that I'm the most excited about. In addition to metrics and measuring. Um, what is what does the messaging entail? Is it a social media strategy? What what are the what are the overarching elements? So, and messaging. I can get you access to the brief if you haven't seen it, but it's really a very broad and deep marketing campaign cool. that would equate itself to something like, um, and I might be aging myself, but those campaigns that were like your brain on drugs or got milk or however the heck we got tobacco used to be uncool something that will engage everyone in understanding why entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial ecosystem are required if we ever hope to have thriving economies in our communities cool okay that's awesome um, so I owned a marketing firm for seven years and I know it's not, um, any one of us, but I would love to contribute, um, in, in awesome. a in way that I can. So, um, I'm sure we'll keep in touch and definitely connect with me when we get there. 
Um, yeah, and then a big part of what you're talking about is um, what I'm studying in my doctorate, which is advocacy. Like, why is this so important? Beautiful. And communicating it to specifically community college presidents throughout the United States, I think is just a way to sort of distribute the message and impact broadly. Like if we can get into the community college systems, which I think NACI is wonderful, that's what I'm actually um, attending on behalf is NACI, um, which is National Association for Community College Entrepreneurship. Then that's a way we can distribute the message in a very grassroots feeling way, but also professional. So that's awesome. I kind of wanted to jump in. I really appreciate the fact that you guys are thinking about this and all the work that you've put into it up until this point. So thank, thank you. you for that. Yeah. I will message you if it's easy to message you on Slack or yeah. you put, your, put your email address in the chat here and I'll shoot you a note. Definitely. I'll do that right now. Thank you. I think that's really great. I, I know, you know, having attended Dia's conference um, a couple of months ago to watch people come together and uh, in a community. I mean, Dia, if you'll tell them about the, a little bit about your community and, and the engagement that you got from the Main Street people as well as the university. As well. Um, yes, so uh, I'm from Ada, Oklahoma. We are Southeast Oklahoma, 16,000 population, so pretty small. And we have a four year university. So um, a year back in 2018, we put up uh, kind of like an entrepreneurship conference and uh, we really got great uh, attention from the community. People came in and all we did was just introduce the uh, entrepreneurial resources and service providers uh, in the community. So we were like, let's do it again. And uh, this year, we kind of had a focus in ecosystem building. And Celia spoke about the issue of goals and ecosystem building. And, you know, by the end of the conference, uh, we had people saying, oh, we are ecosystem builders. Mm -hmm. But, um, which is really cool. But uh, we had a really diverse crowd from entrepreneurs uh, to Main Street businesses, small, uh, small businesses, and even student entrepreneurs. We don't have a large tech entrepreneurship community yet. Uh, that might be something that's coming up in the future. But um, people were really talking about collaboration and uh, that was really neat to see. And we followed up since then uh, we followed up with a notes document, uh, supposed to go out today, and uh, just uh, kind of following this format with how you're doing it with eShip that let people take the lead on it, ask them that, hey, is there something else we need to add? Uh, and we've identified four main initiatives. One is we need to have more regular meetups, so more opportunities for entrepreneurs and service providers to meet. The second was the creation of an entrepreneurship hub in our community. So kind of like a one-stop shop, a co-working space, business incubator. Uh, the third thing we spoke about was access to finance, capital. And um, the final thing was building culture, which kind of incorporates everything. But that was the four main initiatives that we got out of the conference. And very similar to the ESHIP, what we're doing is we're going to give it back to the community, tell them what they think about it. and kind of let them be the champions of it. I love that. I think that's wonderful. Let me know if I can put you in touch with um, the, the ladies from Athens, Georgia. So okay. their community is about the same size as yours, maybe a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. and they got people together. So again, partnering with the university, partnering with civic leaders, Main Street. Um, they were at the TomTom Tom Festival with us, and, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's, it's nice to see when small communities, because the ideas of the idea behind these eShip goals is they're fractal. They have to be able to work on not only a nationwide level, but um, but in small communities and then in really big ones. So Joe Bartman, who's on our calls, Joe lives in like a 500 person community in North Dakota. Those seven goals, plus the storytelling that's infused in all of them, still need to work. Right. And then I was at the Global Entrepreneurship Congress. So 1800 to 2000 people getting together and all they kept talking about was build, building one global ecosystem. 
the thing is, I don't know. I mean, personally, I'm not sure whether or not everyone understood what we meant or what other people were talking about. They just know that they're a part of something. And that's the excitement, right? So you put it out there, like Beth said, you put out that messaging and you let people kind of roll with it and, and it snowballs. So, uh, so it's really powerful. So let me ask you, what is your, who, who or what is your challenge? Because I feel like um, you get people in the community who kind of get it. And then you get people in the community who don't. And I'm curious about um, across the board because you're all in different areas. What, um, where, do, you, do you have a pain point? Is that in a certain sector or environment or job role? And maybe we'll see what the commonalities are and the differences are. So Katie, who is the, the most challenging for you? To in terms of ecosystem building, I think it's really encapsulated in uh, Initiative 6.5, the idea of getting a, a funding in particular for ecosystem building as a concept. Um, you know, we, we sort of couch our ecosystem building underneath other programs and other underneath research, but as a, a standalone entity, there's not a lot of people who we're familiar with at this point who see the value of just funding sort of the, you know, networking and the web building and, and all that of ecosystem building. So I think it comes back to the measurables, right? Measurables in an industrial age uh, model is is about um, the profitability. The the your deliverables are different. Ecosystem building deliverables are really squishy. They're um, they're intangibles. Beth, what do you see? Because I know you're like you're working on this all the time. Right, so the biggest challenge for us, I think, in our community or region has been the uh, prevalent scarcity mentality. The, the resources are here. Our problem is the resources keep, keep getting put towards things that we're not necessarily quite ready for because someone just thinks it's a good idea and they want to get the spotlight shown on that organization or that entity versus stopping and talking to the rest of the ecosystem to understand really where the gaps are how do we fill those gaps and in what order so though our global campaign awareness campaign worked and everyone's all excited about entrepreneurship we're not yet coming together to say what makes sense if if you have the scarcity mentality and you really believe there are minimal resources then it makes even more sense for us to come together and really look at the gaps and prioritize where how we fill them so that's still a big challenge here um but not gonna take our eyes off the ball that's a good plan i think part of that universal support also needs to be where we take care of each other and support each other in doing this work because you know entrepreneurs are very needy people um, it's just the nature of it and ecosystem builders spend a lot of time and energy supporting that right and you know what they say about caretakers that they're the last ones to be taken care of so I think also fellow ecosystem builders and that's what I've seen with this community particularly you know each of champions probably more so because they they're engaged um, at a at a higher frequency um that that you'll um you'll contact each other and you'll you'll ask and whatnot so dia what's the challenge for you um i think our challenge is going back to the measurements and how do we measure in tangible numbers because you know economic development traditionally has been a number of jobs or things like that and we are publicly funded and entity uh, so it's kind of almost like we have to um, show that this is a legit thing by showing in measurements and numbers and I think that the concept of uh, the importance of show social capital is people are understanding it more and more uh, that you know a great entrepreneurial story is also should be considered 
a good measurement. But I think as we are working on that goal for measurements will definitely help with this challenge. That's that's wonderful. Sam, I, I feel like because you live in the, that metrics world, um, I know Tom Chapman, uh, my fellow startup champion, talks tries to talk to people more about sort of job creation because that's the economic development model. He talks about wealth creation. Yeah. So so it's very different to create jobs and versus mm -hmm. creating wealth. So yeah. how how do you measure or how should we measure for robustness in the ecosystem? I mean that's that's what it's gonna come up against, right? So your um your voice was was kind of choppy there, so I missed the question. So my question is, in measuring for uh, impact, mm -hmm. because ecosystem building is squishy, mm -hmm. and it's very hard to create tangible, you know, how do you measure a robust ecosystem? Mm -hmm. So how, first of all, what is your challenge that you are, that you come up against? Yeah. So what can we work on? It's tied to the question that you asked, actually, and what everyone else is talking about, which um, is measuring entrepreneurial impact, and, and, and specifically the, uh, the impact of the ecosystem. So it's not just the impact of the entrepreneurship, but the impact of the overall ecosystem, and not just in one region, but a macro measurement. So across the United States, how can we measure um the the value of ecosystems and one thing that i've been looking at a lot lately is um is is along the lines of measuring wealth versus job creation and this won't surprise you but i that i've been looking at value so what is the definition of value and how do entrepreneurship how do entrepreneurs create value through problem solving so if you can think of it if you if that can be reframed to be value bringing value to the problems in the community, you're not just talking about jobs, you're talking about how people think. And if we can reframe for problem solving, then look at the issues. Like I'm working on a um, challenge right now through NACI that is for opioid. So how can community colleges work on the opioid issue? And how can they contribute? Well, that's just a problem solving exercise. And I know this is thinking very beyond the scope of job creation, but I do think there's a lot of value in the entrepreneurial mindset being beyond just economic development. Like, I think that what we're doing right now is bigger than economic development. So. Absolutely. Is that like, I, sometimes I feel like I get crazy looks when I say that, but <laughs> I don't care. No, this is Katie. Sorry, I had to go I off. I have a feeling. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I have a feeling that um, that in this circle, we kind of understand what. Yeah, I mean, more more so than in most communities, right? That that the people on this call are nodding their heads because they really do understand that that it is. It's it's. It's about, you know, so one of the things that I, one of the things that I do, I facilitate diversity inclusion conversations. Mm -hmm. And in diversity inclusion conversations, my focus is about belonging. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if we create a sense of belonging, then people don't leave, right? It's community making, it's place making, mm -hmm. it's, it's culture inside an organization. If you work for a company, where you feel heard, seen, and respected, then there's no, and then you're, you're feeling like you're making an impact, then you really aren't driven to leave. Why do people leave organizations? That's the biggest expense for a company, mm -hmm. right? So the, if you have the biggest expense of a company being taken care of by creating culture where people feel like they belong there and they're part of an impactful organization, then there's no reason to leave. And at the very end, it does equate to dollars, right? Mm -hmm. I just had a call with um, a friend of mine in Greece about ag um, 
innovation and how they're trying to get corporations to understand that that not picking just the one cash crop and raping the fields because that's the only thing that grows, that that's not sustainable in the long run. So if you're looking at it immediately, right, it's like, how do I get in? And, and I think high tech, high growth um, to businesses always have that frame, you know, the framing or people perceive that's pretty you're gonna come in, you're gonna make this great big thing, and then you're gonna exit really rich and quickly, right? So that's what they're looking at. It's a very short term thing. We've got to play the long game. And Victor talks about Victor Huang talks about the fact that the work that we're doing is twenty and thirty year work. So ecosystem building won't be solved at the end of the e summit. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. So we're gonna we have to be in it for the long haul and show that sustainability and that impact for the so maybe trying to get people to look at it the way I don't but um but I think that's important. So so what other thoughts come to mind when you talk about um getting the support that you need to be successful? Are you talking to me or everybody? Everybody. Anybody who You know, I think that um, it would be really great to have, um, I don't know what the most organized way of doing this is, but to, to have one, and it might be too short term for this conference in that it's next week, but it would be kind of neat to have a, an understanding of which, um, which groups that people are in, you know, are somehow like meet up with your metrics group. I, I assume that's a built into a B that's already been thought of that be accurate. So with, um, as far as your, your respective systems yeah, like or, who or been, at because, who you've been participating with. Say that again. Who you've been participating okay. with, it's one thing to see you guys. I'm pretty sure I'll recognize you, but to see everybody in real time. <laughs> and you know, it's just, it, you kind of think, are you, are you the person on that call? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think that there'll, there'll be some of that. So other than Katie, can will least speak to that more yeah. about about seeing and you've had the opportunity and i guess katie were you an mbia i was there yeah yeah so so and but you've seen people like louisa aside from that or beth seen tyler and and um other people outside of that so when you see them physically because we're on these calls, right? It's a little different, like Sam said, to walk up to them and go, is that you? Are you the one that I, I was geeking out on something? So how does that translate? And that's sorry. the best thing, Katie. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. It's always more always more effective to be in person, obviously. And um, I don't know if I've seen, you know, direct implications to my work yet, um, but I think just feeling, you know, in partnership and in collaboration with other people is really inspiring and, and exciting, you know, as you're sort of quote unquote, going it alone in your own space. I've kind of just noticed that, uh, you know, ecosystem builders and people in the entrepreneurship field are, um, they're usually friendly. Um, I was recently at the Global Coworking Conference in Denver, and it's called Juicy, the Global Coworking Unconference Conference, you know, uh, and they, they were like several happy hours and stuff, but people would just walk up and you're like, hey, are you part of Juicy? And I saw in this session, so people are really friendly. And also the unconference is a great way to get the people um, 
who are thinking about the same problems or are in the same situation as you because they, you know, they select the same sessions that um, you want to attend. So I've noticed that was pretty beneficial. That, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Um, and Beth, I know that that um, what some of the things that you've you've been part of, like when we were at TomTom, Tom, one of the things that we were very intentional about was the convening outside the conference. So creating community in that space, because um, if that's one thing that that I will totally geek out on, and David Hirsch is, is my, my partner in crime in that, is that we will try to create as much space for everyone to socialize and get to know each other and talk about those things. So, so I know you were part of that. Yes, and that is so much appreciated because so much of my day-to-day -day is just all business, all business. So when we you know, when we were together in Denver and when we were at TomTom, Tom, it was just so nice to see the, the importance that was laid on just this, the social aspects of, of building community. So thank you for that. And I saw you already took some initiative to talk about the Forward Cities event. So Forward Cities is having a summit in Pittsburgh. Um, and, and so Beth already put out there kind of randomly on Slack, who else is going to be there? Do you want to share an Airbnb? Those are things that we're working towards. So, so that we'll probably, if, so what David and I really want to work towards, and this is something aside from eShip, is the opportunity that when you're at these conferences and summits, that there's, there's a, a, a place to convene. There are people that are connecting other people and inviting them into the space. So that's really, that's also part of that universal support. So um, I think we, I, for me, it's really important not to discount that because that's, that's the glue, right? Team building, it, I mean, ecosystem building is a team sport. You don't, nobody does it by themselves. It's, or nobody should do it by themselves in my opinion. So, so in the interest of a couple of minutes, and I'm gonna try to give you a couple of minutes back of your day as well. Um, so when I was the lead organizer at One Million Cups, we had, um, in speaking about support, we had a question that we asked if you were a speaker at One Million Cups. And the last question we always asked was, what can the One Million Cups community do for you? So since you're all part of this eShip community, let me ask you individually and if you'll share. So what can the eShip community this community in particular do to help you? Dia. Um, you know, I, I feel like, uh, like I mentioned, Celia was our uh, keynote speaker at the summit. And just when in a community, somebody from outside comes and says the same message, even if it's something that someone in the community was already saying, it just has a different impact. Uh, so I think what eShip can do is now that I know so many other people, experts in different fields, you know, just uh, coming back and helping us share the story is uh, very important sometimes. Um, I'll pass it over to Samantha. Um, you know, I think that I'm just really grateful for everything that the, that the team has done to put this together. And um, I don't think I'm gonna know <laughs> at this point um what i need other than just being in the room and interacting with all these brilliant people i hope that's enough <laughs> um Beth. i'm gonna say i don't know either at this point except for everything that that you're doing that we're doing now is all leading up to what's ultimately going to help all of us right i did have one quick question though and i'm sorry if i I'm digressing from your schedule, Celia, but, and we can talk about this offline if you want to, but I'm wondering where the briefs and debrief or brief briefs are and if they're going to be part of the conference or what's up with that. Okay, I, and I will definitely answer that question. Um, Katie, why don't you go ahead and then I will, I will wrap up by letting you know part of where that brief brief stuff is. Okay. Great. Yeah. And uh, along those lines, I was also curious, just not for this call, but 
you know, any expectations of ship champions and um, particularly those of us who have received support from Kaufman. So just putting that in your brain too, Celia. Um, what I want from this community, I mean, I think just this conversation has been really great. Sam, like you, when you said, you know, we can't think about um, things in tr like traditional economic development forms, like we have to talk about wealth building, not just job creation. And that is something that I've heard recently um, at the MBA conference, MBA conference um, from a, a organization called Start Garden in Grand Rapids. And, you know, the, the man who was saying it was an African American man who was a recent co-director, a new co-director at, um, at Start Garden. And, and those words that he said were just so true. And it's just really exciting and empowering to hear that reflected back across different spaces and how vital it is, it, or how vital it feels to me to start thinking about it in that terms rather than, you know, just, just plain old job creation because we don't actually know what those jobs are, are paying or what they're doing for the community. So just hearing sort of the pile-on effect of um, this community as it grows is really exciting. And so I, it's not really a need from the community, but it's just something I'm thankful for. Great, that's lovely. I, I like that a lot. Um, I keep thinking about things like um, like the Uber drivers, right? So so that's another job, that's job creation. But when you're doing two side hustles and a, a part-time gig, does that really make it one, you know, would it have been one big job as opposed to, you know, three little jobs so we get more job numbers but not necessarily that wealth um, creation i think you know what dia said is really important too that we have to raise each other up so the fact that that um you know i it, i was i i felt very honored to come to your community and part of that that importance to me is finding out what's important to you right so so, and being able to share with the community that you are part of a greater ecosystem and the, the things that Dia was doing. I think, you know, when I, when I started this gig, there was a lot of, in my mind, that, that whole imposter syndrome, um, validation stuff. And now I, I talk about feeling affirmed. So when you have other people come into your community to affirm you or, um, on social media or whatever, I think that's powerful and important because people don't know what all you are doing. And that's a shame because what you're doing is really important and it's impactful and you are working on something much greater than yourselves. And so being able to share that um, and the more we share that light and shed that light on other people, the more others will understand that they have a role to play. All right, so you, somebody said, well, you can't all be entrepreneurs. So the Kauffman Foundation message for the State of Entrepreneurship Report this year was all about growing your own. And when you grow your own, that doesn't mean everybody becomes an entrepreneur. That means three people out of a, a, a thousand during the course of a month are going to become an entrepreneur. And it's the job of the 997 to support those three entrepreneurs. So that's how we create robust communities. And while we're creating robust communities and, um, and doing all those things, as Beth question, as Beth prompted, so this is the one of three current Canvas iterations that we have. You will see something that will look like this ish as a canvas for the projects. So the goal is that um, that these things will be filled out um, on Thursday morning at the conference for each of those 30 initiatives. The ones that have already been submitted, those are a great seated starting off point, right? So some of them will be blank, and some of them, thanks to the efforts of these ship champions, other members of the community, have some thing around it. So what we wanna do is get them all to that phase, and then also, 
um, the ones that have been have been completed or at least pre-filled in some way will be able to talk about does that work who should support it who what 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 would make it more sustainable how much money you know so we'll be spending a couple of hours to really fine-tune that the goal is um, is to create pilot programs that will be launched and so at this summit it is the kickoff for our deliver phase of the eship goals so the idea is to deliver these into pilotable models that will be um, kicked off as we as we um, go through this next year so so beth does that answer your question thank you so much i was very hungry for that answer so i appreciate it <laughs> Looking forward to it. Okay, and then as we, yes, so as we get that also, what I would really like to do is um, is take those and we'll link them in the dashboard so that we can um, we can have other people also look at them and, and understand that there is work being done, right? It doesn't go from summit to summit and we live in a void in between. So you, some of you, a lot of you have worked your butts off for the last year to get them to this point, this point where we can start presenting some of these ideas. And, and then after we present the ideas that we should get them to move forward. So this isn't just a mind exercise. This is like, this is the thing, right? So anyway, um, did I answer both you and these questions or Mm-hmm. Katie, are you all good? Okay. Beth, are you all good? Yes. Okay. And I'm, Sam I'm and good. Dia? All good. All right. So I will look forward to seeing you ladies um, very, very soon. Oh, my gosh. Just upon us. So I can't wait to see all of you in person. You have a great week. Thank you very much. Bye. Safe Bye. travels.